Okay, which of the temperaments? We've talked about the extroverts, which are the lion and the otter, and the introverts, the golden retriever and the beaver. Now, which two do you suppose are the hardest on people? Lions? Lions and beavers. Lions and beavers are the hardest. The lions, because they're trying to get everything done and they don't care if it's an unbalanced lion, you know, how many dead bodies he leaves behind. But the beavers are so perfectionistic, they'll be fault finding and, you know, picking nits and they'll be real nitpickers in life. And so they can be really, really hard on people. Your kid made the bed, but the, there's a wrinkle in the bed, you know. So <laughs> don't have a cow about it, you know. It's a wrinkle, for goodness sakes. At least they made the bed. So figure, figure out what you, yeah. Anyway, so which two temperaments then would tend to be too soft on people? Otters and golden retrievers. So that's important for us to know. So beavers and lions need to lighten up a little bit. Otters and golden retrievers need to toughen up and set some boundaries with people. And so what temperament was Jesus? We talked about that at the beginning. I mean, he was strong in the face of opposition. He was a lion. And yet he was a gifted storyteller, just like an otter, a tremendous speaker. He drew great crowds. You think people went out there to hear some guy drone on in a boring way about the Old Testament? No, he was a gifted speaker or he wouldn't have drawn the crowds. He was very compassionate, like a golden retriever. John, the beloved disciple, wasn't afraid to lean his head on his bosom at the Last Supper. He trusted Jesus. He knew that Jesus loved him. Uh, he knew that he was the fountainhead of love. So he could trust him. And we trust Jesus. We go to Jesus as a golden retriever many times. You know, the one who's going to bring comfort to us. We, we run to him. And then he was loyal even to death on the cross. He was loyal to God, absolutely. Uh, that was a golden retriever characteristic, and he was as detailed as a beaver. He knew every jot and tittle of the law, had it memorized, could quote it, understood it better than anybody else on the planet. So uh, we see all four of these characteristics in Jesus. So now what happens, these are temperaments that we are born with in our natural birth, but what happens when we're born again? When we're born again of God, the Holy Spirit comes into us. And what does he do? He begins to give us wisdom. He begins to strengthen our strengths, and he begins to shore up our weaknesses. And now that we have some understanding of the temperaments, we can understand where some of our weaknesses are, and we can go to Christ and say, Lord, strengthen me in this area. Yeah, I'm guilty of you know, X, Y, Z. I have some of these weaknesses. You know, when I first began reading these uh, temperament things, I was reading the list that's on page two of the temperament test. It's the, uh, the page that has all the fine print in it, the columns. Looks like this. And I was reading some of the beaver weaknesses, and there's a lot of them listed there. And I saw some and said, oh, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. Well, the funny thing was, after a few months, it started to come back to me, some of the things I used to do, and I, I thought, oh yeah, I am like that. <laughs> I used to be that way. Maybe I'm not so much that way anymore because the Lord has helped me. But yeah, now I remember I was that way. And uh, yeah, that was a weakness. So the Lord has helped me with those things. Now, so Jesus, when he comes in, He's going to start to balance us out. Because uh, you may have on your temperament test, you may have some peaks that are really high, and you may have some areas that, are, that you're really low in. And so what he's going to do is kind of, you know, I think Jesus was straight line right down the middle. He was all four of the temperaments. And what he wants to do when he balances us out, if, if we're an introvert, he makes us more extroverted. If we have a hard time making a decision, he's going to train us how to make decisions. And so what we do is we tend to approach the middle in all of these areas. I mean, yeah, we're still what we've always been, but you know, the way we respond, we, we don't always respond to people the way we used to. 
Now we still have those instincts. We still start to go there, but then we stop ourselves back up and realize, hey, I'm, I'm just acting like a beaver. I'm acting like a retriever. I, I won't express an opinion or I'm, I'm failing to communicate. So I need to make myself clear, you know, because failing, you know, for a golden retriever, failing to communicate means other people are going to walk on you if you do not indicate where you're coming from and what you are thinking. It's not fair not to share your feelings, especially if you're in a married situation or you're working closely with someone. Now, we can share this stuff in love. We don't have to blow up. So, amen. amen. Now, since Christ is working on us, we've also got to remember we cannot use our temperament as an excuse for behaving poorly. You know, we may have weaknesses. Oh, well, I'm, I'm a lion. What do you expect? No, we can't do that. Because Jesus called every single one of the temperaments to walk in love. He said, love one another. That means lions need to love beavers. Beavers need to love lions. And all the temperaments need to love each other in the body of Christ. And you may say, well, that person just drives me up the wall. That's okay. You have to love them. Anyway. And God has given us the grace to be able to do that because the fruit of the Spirit is for every temperament. The Lord's commandments are for every temperament. We, don't, we can't hide or use our temperament as an excuse for misbehaving. Amen. So a good prayer is to ask the Holy Spirit, if you, if you get a handle on this and you know, okay, this is what I am, then that gives us a great opportunity to begin to pray and say, okay, Lord, you need to balance me out. Yeah, in this area, you know, I have a hard time making the decision and making it stick. I have a hard time putting my foot down in areas where I need to put my foot down. Or I'm one of those people, I put my foot down way too quickly before I even think about what I'm doing. I'm, I'm all, I've jumped all over somebody. We need to lighten up and just kind of back off and say, wait a minute, uh, Jesus, help me in this situation. Give me wisdom you know, to uh, be more balanced in my temperament. Just to give you some examples of temperament blends. And what we've done is describe, for example, taking the dominant temperament and then the secondary temperament. For example, um, Brother Self, you said you were lion otter. Hmm? Right? Okay. Lion otter. This is the... I don't think I'll embarrass you, but let see, you tell me if this fits, okay, or I'll ask Glenda, right? <laughs> yeah, this is the, the second strongest extrovert, completely given over to activity, a natural promoter and salesman with enough charisma to get along well with others, the best motivator of people, and one who thrives on a challenge, almost fearless and exhibits boundless energy. Two speeds, wide open, and stop. <laughs> Typical lion otters are courtroom attorneys, fundraisers. They're always noticed, uh, always noticed wherever he goes. A preacher who combines practical Bible teaching and church administration. As a teacher, he is drawn to social sciences and rarely to math, science, or abstract stuff. The, um, let's see. Yeah, those are weaknesses. You've overcome all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, are we, are we in the right uh, ballpark here? Some of, it, yes. Some of it? Okay. Yeah, everybody's a little bit different. But anybody else? I've got temperament blends here. Okay, golden retriever beaver. Okay. Golden retriever beaver. Oh, you'll like this. Okay. The most gracious, gentle, and quiet, rarely angry or hostile, never embarrasses himself, always does the right thing, tends to have spiritual gifts of mercy and help, and is neat and organized in his work, responds well to the needs of others, tends to be passive and may neglect discipline of the children, um, encounters fear, negativism, criticism, and lack of self-image, tends not to get involved. Barnabas was probably a retriever beaver. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Pretty close. Anybody else? You know, do the thing where you have a different personality stand up to see like you... Oh, okay. We can do that. All right. 
Based on your dominant, and some of you haven't done taken the test yet, but that's okay. On, for those of you who have taken the test, why don't we have all the lions stand up? Okay, all right, thank you ladies. All right, how about all the otters? Okay, he's got a red t-shirt on, okay. How about, uh, yeah, golden retrievers? Okay, all right. Got a lot of golden retrievers in here tonight. Okay, thank you guys. And the beavers. Oh. <laughs> well, it's a class, that's why Hallelujah. Okay, yeah, you guys may be seated, yeah. As Debbie said, it's a class. Who else would come? The beavers are going to come. <laughs> By the way, we want to encourage you and welcome you to join the International Order of Spirit-Filled Beavers. <laughs> Take sign-ups after this class. The reason we have a support group for beavers is beavers almost invariably think they are a weird temperament. They wonder why, they've always wondered all their life why they are different from everybody else. And so, yeah. So anyway, you guys are cool. You guys are all right. We're all in good company here. Amen. Anybody else uh, temperament blend? What is a lion beaver? A lion beaver. I'm glad you asked. That is an interesting... Okay. Uh, no, they will destroy others if they are uh, prosecuting attorneys. <laughs> yeah, lion beaver. The lion beaver is an extremely industrious and capable person, probably the best business person. We making sense? Okay. The optimism and practicality of the lion overcome the moodiness of the beaver. They are both goal-oriented yet detailed. They do well in school, have a quick analytical mind, and are yet decisive. They become a thorough leader doing an extraordinary job. Don't debate with a lion beaver unless you're sure of your facts, for he will chew you to bits <laughs> being both verbally aggressive and in touch with all the details. Amen. Extremely competitive and forceful, a serious researcher, he is usually successful whatever he does. General George Patton was probably a lion beaver. Uh, the weaknesses, they tend to be dictators. And, you know, I don't know if we want to go into that or not. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a, a lion beaver or a beaver lion, uh, that is a force to be reckoned with. And so a lot of attorneys are like beaver lions and, or lion beavers. And they love to be in the courtroom. They're competitive, and yet they have a handle on all the facts. So, yeah, they can easily shred you <laughs> or shred your case. So uh, let's see. What else do we need to comment on? Otter beaver. Okay. Otter beaver is a very interesting temperament. Otter beaver. All right. Where is my... There it is. Otter beaver. Highly emotional people who fluctuate drastically. They laugh one moment and are in tears the next. Very merciful, moved to tears by the griefs of others are often good public speakers, actors, musicians, and do well in the fine arts. People, they're people-oriented from the otter side and good detailed workers from the beaver. So, does that make sense? Okay. So anyway, fascinating stuff.